We all know you from, from a fashion designer perspective. We see your labels every time we, we go into the stores. I would love for you to share the moments in your career, and it seems like they were very personal, defining moments that led you on a different path, that led you on a path to, to looking for other types of success than the success we may know you for. My father died when I was three years old, and he was a custom tailor and he made custom-made suits for men. So I guess I was born on 7th Avenue. My mother was a fashion model. So yes, instead of my daily routine, fashion 7th Avenue is where I was brought up. But death hit me very early in my life. My father died at the age of three. And there, I guess, started the whole train of situations that led me through my life. And I really didn't want to be a designer. You know, having come from a working mother, I wanted to stay home and take care of my child. It was one of those things that I so desperately wanted to be that woman, you know, to care for my child and be the mother who was home that I had never experienced myself. But of course, those of us who know that's whatever you want, it's not the way that's going to happen, so we might as well push that aside, you know, whatever we think it is, it's not going to be. I started uh, on 7th Avenue at a woman by the name of Ann Klein. She was my mentor, she was my mother, she was just about the closest person in my life. And unfortunately, in those days, Ann had something that we never discussed, and that was cancer. It was never talked about, it was just the way it was. And I was there having a baby. And I was nine months pregnant very, very pregnant. I had been to Versailles, and I was so excited. I was going to stay home and finally be the mother that I wanted to be. Well, of course, again, that's not the way it was brought out to be. Anne had cancer, and I was delivering a baby, and we had a collection due. So there I was in the hospital, and having, thank God I was nine days late. <laughs> So they called me up and they said, okay, Donna, when are you coming back to work? And I said, would you like to know whether I had a boy or a girl? <laughs> By the way, I had a little girl. And they said, well, that's very nice, but the collection is due. And I said to the doctor, you know, when can I go back to work? And they said, well, uh, Donna, you were 10 days late. You're not in the best condition. You had a 10-pound baby girl. All of us know what that feels like. <laughs> and I said, uh, well, about you know, I can't really go back to work. They said, well, fine, we'll bring the collection to you. They brought the entire company to my house where I had just moved in in Lawrence, Long Island. A phone call came in, and all of a sudden, this happened. My boss, Ann Klein, died that moment in a hospital. And I just, it was in, I was in a state of shock. You know, it was Ann and I in the collection. Ann died, my daughter was born, and I had known nothing about it. So I ran out of the house, and I had thought everybody would come and celebrate the birth of my child, but there I was looking at the death. So I really realized at that moment, after I smoked a cigarette, which I had stopped smoking, uh, birth and death was sort of the story of my life. You know, you talked about these transformative moments uh, growing up, and obviously with Anne Klein. But in terms of when you channeled your passion around uh, certain causes or efforts, those too were inspired by very defining moments, defining moments related to death and related to tragedy. How did you feel empowered though when you're talking to yourself about the problems to take that voice? We all have those voices in our head and actually channel that voice to be a change agent? Philanthropy is the, seriously the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. And I probably had to get to be this age to be able to have the strength and the conviction to do it because I'm so obsessed with it. I was very honored with the fact that they had, I had the ability to have this vision and say, I'm going to smart a tiny little company for me and my friends called Urban Zen. And I want it to be about philanthropy and commerce. I want to be able to dress and address people. Urban Zen is a place and a space where like-minded people come together who want to create change of mind, body, and spirit in healthcare, 
education, and culture. Past, present, and future. You can't do anything unless that's you, who you are. What do you like to taste? What do you like to feel? What kind of environment do you like to be in? What kind of office space do you like to be in? What is the ultimate of how you want to live? How do you want your children to live? Be that responsible citizen of how to make that change. Create a posse of how to create the change. You have it here, Forbes. Nothing better than this. Every single one of these people are change makers. Join the club. We're a much more powerful group when we join forces together. You said when you were younger that your work wasn't always about building an empire. If you're not building an empire, what's that dream that you've been building? There, I never think of it as an empire. I mean, it, it, you only can do what your heart tells you to do. Your heart is your driving force. If your head comes first, I wouldn't highly recommend it. Come from your heart, whatever it is, home run. What's your sense of purpose now in all that you do? I guess I'm always a guilty Jewish mother. Let's start there. <laughs> so I get it from the minute I get up in the morning till the minute I go to bed. You know, I had it when I gave birth and I wasn't there. And with my grandchildren, I'm leaving it all over again. I have eight grandchildren and it drives me crazy. And I'm trying to figure out how do you put it all together in one day. And I, no matter how much yoga I do, and how much meditation I do, you know, it. I think that's something, if I don't correct, I'm going to have to come back the next time to do it all over again, and I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> so I've got to figure out how to be the mother that I had so dreamed that I wanted to be. So that sense of purpose, although the dynamics have changed, mm -hmm. that drive is still there. My drive is, is care, is, you know, being the love and the nurturer and the caregiver. 20 years from now, what do you think you'd be saying to yourself? as you're running a thousand miles a minute. Can I have another 20? Can I have another 20? Can I have another 20? <laughs> I'm scared. Oh, no, 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 I have so much more to do. No, 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 I'm not ready.